Tuesday, February 28th, and today I have the good pleasure of talking about something good that is going on in the U.S. Congress. It's not often that I get a chance to talk about something good that's happening in Congress because it's it's a terribly disjointed organization. It's them against those. Or so to speak. But in this case, we have two politicians, one Democrat and one Republican, who are working together on a major effort that this country desperately needs. Because this is only one of seven nations that does not offer this particular service to its population. And I'm talking about universal health care. And I'm talking about the Republican Congresswoman Stephanie Bice of Oklahoma and the Democratic Congresswoman Chrissy Houlihan from Pennsylvania. Now, they have gotten together, and they are working hard, very hard, to come up with a plan for universal health care for the people in the United States. Now, these women have had other jobs before they came to Congress. In fact, Congresswoman Bice had a job where they gave her eight weeks of personal leave when she had her first child. And she was happy about that because at that time there were very few companies that considered giving paid leave for maternity events or any other kinds of events. And Chrissy Houlihan was serving in the military when she had her first child. And she did not get treated very well by the military with respect to maternity leave and time off. In fact, she said that was one of the reasons why she chose to leave the military. So this bipartisan duo is trying to change the situation in this country and to get universal health care for our population. Both of these women believe that it's an embarrassment for the United States to be one of seven nations that doesn't have a focus on the well-being of the family. And it's really, really important, they said, that we lead by our example. So at the end of January this year, they were determined to find a solution to the lack of universal paid family and medical leave in America. And the Congresswomen officially launched their House Bipartisan Paid Family Leave Working Group. Now, there are key words in that statement. It's the House Bipartisan Paid Family Leave Working Group. That means that they have assembled more than the two of them, to work on this particular situation, which is truly, in my mind, a blight on the stature of the United States of America, that we, one of the wealthiest nations in the world, cannot provide universal health care for our citizens. So these two congresswomen, who are relatively new to Congress, one elected in 2018, the other in 2020. But they have something else in common. They're both raising daughters. And in the case of Vice, she had some family leave when she was working, which was almost unheard of. Her children were born 20 years ago. And Houlihan's story is a little differently, because she was in the service. She was in the Air Force. And when she had the baby, they gave 
gave her six weeks off, but she couldn't get child care. You had to wait six months to get child care in the service. So that set her off, and that's why she left the service. She said she would have been a, a career Air Force officer if it hadn't been for that situation with the child care. But as it turns out, in this country, only 13% of the people in the lower incomes have any form of health care provided to them. But they're working on jobs that don't necessarily provide health care to people. And both of these women made a great point. They said the lack of paid family and medical leave doesn't just create burdens for families. It hurts the economy by taking women out of the workforce. Well, I think that most women would probably agree that their husband should be taken out of the workforce, perhaps. But in any event, somebody will be removed from the workforce because of the costs associated with raising children. And she, Houlihan, said this is a vicious cycle and we have to put an end to it. And I think that's a great point. Another great point is the fact that there are 125 women working in Congress now, soon to be 126. Now, 33 of them are Republicans and conservatives, but Bice feels she can rally them, and Houlihan feels the same way, that the preponderance of the females in Congress will be willing to work across the aisle. But that still leaves them with 300 male members of Congress to deal with. And I'm not so sure that that's the big problem. I think the big problem lies outside the walls of Congress. It lies with the citizens of the United States. Are they prepared to pay higher taxes in some way, shape, or form in order to fund universal health care? I'm not so sure people are willing to pay those taxes. Imagine, the wealthier people bear a larger burden than the poor people. And the wealthy people have all of these tricky exemptions that they could use. So that would be a very serious problem for getting universal health care. And let me throw this into the mix. The insurance companies in this country stand to lose a lot of money if we had universal health care in premiums and things like that. So are insurance companies prepared to just let universal health care occur? I think not. I think they will be waging war. And you know, it's campaign funding, and those, those insurance companies are among the biggest contributors of campaign funding to protect their rights to screw the American people. So in any event, universal health care is a very tenuous, tenuous battle to win. There are so many little intricacies involved in putting this thing together and making it palatable for the entire country. Because certainly the wealthy don't want to pay more taxes, and the poor can't afford to pay more taxes, and the insurance companies don't want to lose the revenue. So you've got a battle on your hand. And I am not sure, even though we have reached cooperation and bipartisanship in this one area, I'm not sure they can pull it off. So I leave you with those thoughts this morning. Bye and have a great day.